On this episode of the Flop House, we discuss United Passions. And by the end of this episode, you're going to be shouting, Goal! <laughs> that, that was, that's, 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 so when you told us, I've got an idea for the intro, what you meant was you didn't. <laughs> Welcome to the Flop House. I'm Dan McCoy. Hey there, Dan McCoy. I am Stuart Wellington. Hey, Robo Stu. I'm <laughs> Elliot Kalin. And uh, I am David Kalin. <laughs> <laughs> Satan, get thee behind uh, me. <laughs> All right, my job is done. Uh, you know, I predict, like, it, when I was imagining uh, <laughs> this intro, I was imagining Elliot reacting exactly like that <laughs> when it happened. But that, that happens like when we have family functions too. It is not exclusive. Is it to my this. fault you look like Satan and I would rather have you behind me? Uh, you know, Satan was so handsome. Now, here's the thing. Why is, do you want Satan to get behind you? Don't you want him in front of you where you can see where he's going? And yeah, maybe... you'd think he'd be like a rogue and have a powerful backstab attack. <laughs> yeah, no, but don't you like. I think you're just hoping that he follows you in lockstep, though, isn't he? To where? Wait, get, you want him to um, be your. <laughs> wait, you want him to be your minion? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't think that's how what... awesome would that be? Yeah, uh, Satan, isn't that the... you'll be my wingman with that lady? <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> I bet she likes bad boys. <laughs> this, this is one of those kind of fave and wait, wait, wait. If she likes things. bad boys, wouldn't she be suckered in by the, the by the devil that she's talking to, who's trying to big you up? Or are you saying that you're a badder boy That's, than the yeah, devil? If the, the devil idea. is his wingman, he must be the baddest boy mm-hmm. of all. Start producing Bad Boys 3, because I've got your star, <laughs> this guy. Satan's friend. <laughs> Starring Satan's friend. <laughs> Um, so hmm. what What could possibly have Why would we possibly have us? David Kalen, the, the least of the Kalen men? Whoa, 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 whoa. That's... Sorry. Uh, Why would we have David <laughs> Kalen, our sworn enemy, on this podcast? I, I just thought you were giving the people what they wanted. Uh, which people are you talking about? All people always want me. There always. Has, there, have been, there has been a lot of the surprising <laughs> amount of free, uh, free David Kalen talk. That's right. What's interesting about the talk of free David Kalen mm-hmm. is it implies that we're somehow keeping him away from <laughs> oh, no. somewhere. I, you mm-hmm. had me shackled in like the basement for years. Well, yeah, when we were kids, yeah. we had him trapped in a in a lamp genie style. <laughs> oh, so cramped! But it in was there. a desk lamp. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little roomier than a normal. I like to wear my pants lamp. genie style. <laughs> how, how is that? <laughs> really blousy and billowy. <laughs> yeah, oh, it really problem. allows room for things to breathe. Yeah, exactly, like magic. <laughs> And that's why they call him Magic Pants Wellington, because he keeps a live rabbit in his pants. That's why they call him Magic Johnson, because this Johnson has a lot of magic room to because breathe. Because what he would say, let me cast a spell on you with Dan my magic Dan knows about wand. sports too, guys. Uh, is that, is that the... sports beyond the fact that it's Magic Johnson? But it's not Magic Johnson. Wait, there's a guy named Magic Johnson? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a crazy name. It is. It is Next crazy. Next you're going to tell me he owns a, a chain of movie theaters. That's why he's famous, yeah. And that's why you talked about him on the show, right? What? Let's, <laughs> this so, show? So yeah. let's explain why we have David Kalen on the show tonight. <laughs> well, guys, it is the heart of December. And as they say, <laughs> as the colloquialism goes... Snow on the ground, play ball. <laughs> Wait, hold on That's a second. Hold on a second. <laughs> that could possibly be a euphemism for that. Think about it for a minute. Like having an elderly old. person. <laughs> yeah. It's just someone who is pretty clear. Someone who is under the mistaken belief that the age of consent is seventy-five. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're doing a sports episode, right? Hold on. Yeah. Do the curtains match the drapes? Because <laughs> the drapes are white and snowy. <laughs> They're uh, mildewy and moth-eaten. Millowy? Mildewy. <laughs> I said mildewy wrong, okay? <laughs> Sue me. But what, no, wait, go wait, get a will. fucking lawyer for kids. I court, like Millowy. Really. Yeah, what would Millowy mean if you were to define it? his own words. Yeah. Like Stuart Wellington. Good point. That's a great point. Both have the same claim on the English language. <laughs> So, Stuart, what does Milloween mean? Yeah. Uh, Milloween means uh, <laughs> that they are falling to pieces. Yeah. 
Okay. Reese's well, Pieces. <laughs> so that's what an old prison turns Turned into, into Reese's candy? Pieces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We've seen this happen so many times. So, guys, it's a sports. It's sports time. We're all <laughs> yeah, man. Fans. December, it's sports time. Part of sports Whoa. time. Well, there are a lot of sports in December. Well, there's hockey. There's hockey, basketball, and football. Three of the four major sports are happening right now. And we're going to talk about one I of the football major. Football was, was on Thanksgiving. Football is not localized entirely on Thanksgiving. That's so not the why only do day. What about watch it then? Uh, some people don't watch it on Thanksgiving when their brothers don't let them put it on the TV. That's true. Yeah. It did happen uh-huh. on Thanksgiving. Yeah, hey, fucker. Anyway. Wow. What about, what about that one winter sport where you ride around on skis and then you shoot stuff with a gun? <laughs> Biathlon? <James> bonding? <laughs> <laughs> that, thank you, Elliot. Yes. Yeah. And then you have a parachute with a Union Jack on it. No matter what country you're from, <laughs> mm-hmm. it's very insulting to the other countries. <laughs> well, they don't sell them in other countries. <laughs> they only sell that one flavor. <laughs> Flavor of parachute. (laughs) So I can get any flag put on this parachute? No, only the Union Jack. So why are we talking sports? It's December, sports time, USA. Uh, Cage miss is right around the corner. Cage miss is coming up, and you know, it's it's a lot of times people. Shocktober's over. People start putting up their cage miss decorations. Mm -hmm. They forget about small vember. Well, they forget about and they forget about. Sports number uh, and, and sandal vember <laughs> and sandal vember. So wait a minute, only Elliot. Vember. Is this one of those? Is this like a like a Lucy and Ricky situation with you and David? Like yeah, you're we're letting them? Yeah, we draw lines literally. Wait a minute, they were married <laughs> on that show. <laughs> they were brother and brother. <laughs> brother and brother. <laughs> brother. Wow, you did not think much of Lucille Ball, did you? Anyway, uh, speaking of balls, soccer balls, <laughs> soccer balls, yeah, which Lucio Ball was not one of. Now, this was we watched a sports movie tonight. David, well, can you tell us a little bit about what sport it was? I, I would thought s- it was fencing. I, I, yeah, I would. I would say that we would watch the sports movie, except there were almost no sports in the sports movie. But uh, it was about it was about soccer. That's right. Tonight we watched United Passions, mm-hmm. sort starring of. Joan Severance <laughs> <laughs> and Shannon Tweed and Shannon Worry together for once. That's right, the two Shannons. <laughs> Throw Shannon Darty in there. Get some three Shannons in there. In the movie we could, we had to call three Shannons in a fountain. That's right. We pushed them in a fountain. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, United Passions was the tagline? Oh no, they're wearing burlap sacks. Oh, okay. Uh, the, the, the tagline was terrible. that's a lot of Shannons. <laughs> said by like a Mario character. Yeah. That's a spicy Shannon, he said. And then he went down a pipe <laughs> into a world filled with turtles. <laughs> what else are you gonna find in pipes? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Turtles. So like David, you know about soccer, right? <laughs> uh, a little bit, yeah. Okay, so uh, why did we watch this movie again? <laughs> um, I think we watched it because we all wanted to torture ourselves for like an hour and 45 minutes or so. so. That's movie, right. This movie got really bad reviews, it right? It did, yeah. It was, you might call it even a flop. Oh, I see what you did there. What's, uh, what's I the, don't. What's well, the, is, is that so, what the title is? So this movie is about? about the history of FIFA, <laughs> uh, an international soccer organization named after a small French dog. And <laughs> it is. it happened to be released the same week that FIFA uh, was revealed to be a horribly corrupt organization uh, that takes lots of bribes. I wouldn't say it was like revealed that week. I think people knew it for years. but I uh, didn't. Well, and I'm a regular really? soccer gu- watching guy. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're no, a real hooligan type figure. I'm a real goal head. It was, it was released, I don't know if it was the week of, but in very short proximity to when FIFA's uh, headquarters got stormed by the Swiss authorities uh, earlier this year. Wait, so Storm was there? Yeah, Storm was there. That was how they provided cover for the agents to go. She got it very dark. A lot of clouds rolled in. Mm-hmm. Okay. And FIFA's defense was lacking. <laughs> they could use a real goalkeeper. <laughs> That's so yes. soccer and, and uh, <laughs> foul. Red yeah. card. Yep. <laughs> Offside. <laughs> that is a term they use, yeah. Touchdown. <laughs> no, that is not a term they use. Overruled. Objection. Uh, I'll allow it. You got soccer. <laughs> you got soccer is a term they use, yeah. Step up to the soccer field. <laughs> Dan, how many times did you forget the name of this movie while you watched it? <laughs> Yeah, I no, I definitely was like fateful, <laughs> something's <laughs> magical. We were just, we just trying to come up with every like random term for a late night Skinamax movie yeah, title you like, could, and assumed it was right. Lovable occasions, supreme <laughs> sacrifices, ballorama, <laughs> balls in your court, togetherness, 
sports. <laughs> so the movie opens media res. It does not. It no. opens far before the, the res is media. Uh, we start in the year 1904, mm-hmm. which for me is the year that Teddy Soccer Roosevelt year was finally, finally elected under his own power, not just becoming president from an assassination. But as Dan mentioned, soccer year zero. Mm-hmm. Uh, soccer has a problem. Mm-hmm. Everyone plays it. And yet they're all playing with different rules, and they don't have an international governing body to tell them how they're doing it Nobody wrong. gets money off of it. Yeah. Nobody's being paid for soccer. Yeah. And even though rich people love to watch it, as seen by the opening, <laughs> where, well, here's how the movie opens. Where, like, all the top hats in the world yeah. <laughs> come for the top uh, hat The movie convention. opens with, with uh, generic footage of children of different races playing soccer together. And we're going to come back to that footage throughout the movie because the tie of the movie is that the the main theme is everyone plays soccer and it's the one thing holding our fragile Mm -hmm. earth together. It unites us all. (laughs) With their poop. (laughs) It's disgusting. And that's one of the problems FIFA was trying to stamp out was people Mm -hmm. playing soccer with poop, but not literally stamp out because you don't want to step on poop. It's going to get all caught. Unless it's burning on your front door. Then you do want to stamp that out. (laughs) You don't. Otherwise your house will burn down. It would be crazy. all in the You want a Viking funeral of poop? (laughs) (laughs) That's If that's not a metal album, Viking funeral of poop. <laughs> We're sending this poop off to die. Yeah. <laughs> Time to cross the rainbow Val. bridge to Valhalla. <laughs> uh, the so it opens with it opens with a series of letters being traded back and forth between Fisher Stevens and some other dude who are playing the the Austrian and French soccer kings. I guess mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. And well, they go to like England that. and they want to ask the English to join their international <laughs> soccer league. The English, as represented by two guys in top hats, one with a monocle in his eye, are not having any of it. The very idea that someone would tell an Englishman how to play soccer is laughable. It sets up a conflict between England and the rest of the world, which never pays off in the film. (laughs) So then we cut to a meeting where all the other European countries are mad that England didn't join. So they decide they're just going to have their own organization and never let England play in the competition. They're going to go their own way. There's, it's one of those great scenes you have in movies where like everybody's just hanging out in a room with their uh, <laughs> sleeves rolled up, just drinking and having a good mm-hmm. time, like handing out jobs and responsibilities. Yeah. With different accents. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're all and using different accents, which are kind of the same accent. Yeah. And then there's this one guy who's like, but we're going to need a general secretary. And they're like, since you came up with that idea... You get to be the general secretary. And it's like, that's not, I think not really good. Like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> there was a point where everybody Bring did do it. Bring in the prostitutes. Oh. <laughs> but the, the, which I assume is how that scene ended, and they just ended it early. <laughs> they, they were trying to get across, I think, that this was done for love of the game. That mm. game, mm-hmm. foosball. That, <laughs> the game that we game have not played, really seen much a of. A game yeah. played on a tabletop. With guys without arms. <laughs> guys now, that spin around. That have a rod then, through all of their shoulders that's the thing, collectively. Back then in 1904, the only way to play soccer, according to... <laughs> and this is why FIFA needed to come in, was to take men, chop their arms off, and run a steel rod through their shoulders, and spin their corpses or dying bodies around in circles to kick the ball. FIFA said, no more. We will allow people to keep their arms. They can't use them in play. Except unless they're goalies, but we will keep their arms. But if that's the one way independent of each other. But if that's the one way I could provide for my family, you betcha, chop off my arms, <laughs> run that rod through my body. It was a very hard time. To, that was a good I want job. My son to, I want my son to look up to me as I am spun up <laughs> my courses, hurled around, and occasionally kicking the ball. Yeah, and the pro- also FIFA had to deal with the problem that sometimes the ball would just get caught between two players. You yeah, didn't quite reach no one could reach it. it. And you yeah. just, you're trying to spin them, and their bodies <laughs> are. You're they would try have, and jiggle the. Field. Yeah, everyone had to jump in the stands yeah, to cause exactly. enough vibrations. And the problem is partly that the bodies have entered rigor mortis, so they're so <laughs> stiff that they can't even move the feet out of the way to get the ball out of there. One of the other big problems was there would always be one guy at the table who was way more into it than everyone else. <laughs> and you're like, dude, calm down, stop shouting. I think, the, I think those <laughs> were we the don't British care guys, that much. weren't they? No, no, yeah, French sometimes. Guy was like that. But the, uh, you're just like, it's just football guy. But they mm-hmm. establish very early on what this movie will be about, which is a series of administrative meetings... <laughs> Eventually, <laughs> press conferences and More one-on-one meetings? interviews in offices with very little soccer being played on the film except eventually when archival footage is used. And there's literally a scene where I'm not – where this is jumping ahead, but it's during World War II. And there's a scene where they're describing <laughs> a, a game between Germans and Ukrainians where the Germans are being outplayed by these starving Ukrainians, but the ref is – Is clearly on the take. Is clearly on the, the German side yeah. and is 
cheating for the Germans. And this this game is described to us in detail. We don't see it. We see flashes of it. But otherwise, it is. It's like we're, we might as well be watching, a, listening to a radio show called mm-hmm. "Famous Moments in Soccer." <laughs> but Fibber McGee in Soccer. But they also they also don't t- open that closet. It's full of soccer balls. Thump 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 thump. They also talk about it and how the game unfolded as if it's like. It's as if they're like hearing about the Holocaust for the first time or something. They well, are all devastated. And that's the other theme of the movie, which is that all the world events <laughs> in history are most important in how they deal with soccer and how they affect FIFA. So that uh, World War II, how, what does this mean for FIFA? The Great Depression? FIFA, we've lost all our money. Eventually, there's, it's September 2001, and we're in Seth Blatter's office. <laughs> and just to establish the time period, there's a, there's a magazine on, the, on the, his desk with the World Trade Centers being destroyed on it, and it's like it never, it's not mentioned at all. But the, it's just like, hey, man, that's, in the story of FIFA, September 11th is just window dressing. That's how important FIFA is. The amazing thing, though, is that like, they talk about how these great world events affect soccer and then totally gloss over the world events that happen. Like, they go from, like, 1936 to 1942 where they show a newspaper talking about the Battle of Stalingrad to 1950. And mm-hmm. If I can't kick it like a ball, it's not important. <laughs> I mean, this movie had a message to the world, which is if you're not bending it like Beckham, mm-hmm. you are not of note. <laughs> now, so they, they uh. put together FIFA. The name comes right so out. So at this point, you're probably thinking, yes, this movie is basically Star Wars The Phantom Menace if you took out all the aliens and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> kind of yeah, is. It's like all meetings. If you took out the aliens and replaced the laser swords with meetings, <laughs> then, then, yeah, it's, it's Phantom Menace times two. Mm-hmm. Uh, with same s- amount of weird racism, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, now the movie it just it goes like this: Re- Gerard Depardieu comes in and shocks the world by, by declaring. How fat he's yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he he is, used to be a sex symbol, yeah. man. Yeah. He, come on. He just in, he can't stand that Uruguay is celebrating its uh, its Olympic medal when they had Mexicans on the team. He it, says, yeah. "Yeah, there's a weird." current in the movie of between showing FIFA as an anti-racist inclusive organization that's forward thinking and showing the people involved in FIFA having a very Eurocentric view of the world until a heroic guy named Sepp Blatter steps Don't up jump to the plate. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, Joe Avalanche who is Brazilian. Joe Avalanche. Yeah, Joe Avalanche. Avalanche. Because the, the movie's all about how FIFA is an all-inclusive organization, which is why the Brazilian head Because of, you don't have to pay for drinks separately. <laughs> <laughs> Meals. All, your food all is food is included. included yeah. Yeah. Weirdly, you have to pay for soccer. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a midnight buffet, though. But that so Joe it's Avalanche, who's Brazilian, is played yeah. by Sam Neill, who... Is he Brazilian? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, he, he might have might Brazilian. a Brazilian. Yeah, yeah. he oh, sounds pretty way. Brazilian. Yeah. Yeah. Now, normally I'd go through the plot in more detail, but it's just, is it's just the plot? history of FIFA it's scene by scene. It's a bunch of meetings. <laughs> it's a lot of meetings. There's a scene, but we can talk about a couple great scenes. For instance, it's 1950. The World Cup is in Brazil. Brazil is playing Uruguay. Brazil loses. The movie presents this as the worst tragedy in human history. Yeah. It's just like everyone is horrified, and Gerard Depardieu, the head of FIFA, effectively kills him. Yeah. Slow motion, like, motion walking yeah, towards About like nine minutes light. of him walking towards the field to hand the trophy in. Now there's a great mm-hmm. scene where he talks to an eccentric artist about designing the FIFA trophy. Uh, there's a scene where... Tim Roth is con- as Sepp Blatter is confronted with a trunk full of Adidas merchandise. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Now, this movie becomes less interesting the fewer mustaches are in it. That's true. Because yeah, the first half of it is like like a collection of historical mustaches. <laughs> <laughs> the less Fisher Stevens there is in the movie, the more I got bored. That's very true. Yep. His head kind of looks like a soccer ball. No offense. <laughs> No offense. No offense. How can he possibly no take offense to that? And the implication that he has a Charlie Brown shaped head. <laughs> it looks like somebody cartoonishly I mean, tied his tie way too tight. <laughs> Just because he's a walking wall, he's a, he's a walking uh, like New York Review of Books caricature of himself. <laughs> Just because. If you put a mustache on a soccer ball, it would look like Fisher Stevens. <laughs> Just because he was passed over for the role of Wilson in Castaway, but not by a lot. When they were trying to cast the live-action South Park movie, they were considering him for the guidance counselor. Uh, Mr. Mackey? Yeah, Mr. Mackey. The guy with the giant head, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And this is coming from Fisher Stevens fans. <laughs> he, he's, he's great. We love him. We're part of the FS fan club. FSFC. Facebook. <laughs> 
the Fisher Stevens fan club feast fuck <laughs> is all about look feast fuck? Te- here's the thing so Fisher Stevens fan club a little like feast fucking yeah. <laughs> no, a little bit we're, we're, a little bit we're feast fucking now here was the problem Internationally, there was no standardized <laughs> guidelines for Fisher Stevens appreciation, and so Feast Fuck had to be created in order to create standardized rules and implement a real international competition for Fisher Stevens fandom. And now you just love Feast Fuck and Feast Fucking all the time. And yeah, when you get when you when you apply when you become a member state, they give you a what a, a free a brooch face to wear, yeah. <laughs> a brooch. Yeah, right. yeah, and a scrunchie. <laughs> <laughs> wait, you, wait! You don't wear those at the same time, right? Of course not. One is for formal, and one is for informal <laughs> occasions. Yeah, before unless there was... of course FS himself, Fisher Stevens, is in the room, in which case you wear all of that plus your fuss fuck t shirt, <laughs> plus your official fuss fuck gloves. Before there was official organization, there were arguments about whether you could love both Short Circuit Two and Hackers. <laughs> And now we know that it's all acceptable. People would be like, mm-hmm. I think Fisher Stevens is a is a director producer. Well, I think he's an actor. There was <laughs> arguments of that type. Yeah. Luckily, Fistfuck stepped in. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Ooh, so we, this movie is the history of FIFA. It's a parade of mustaches until <laughs> it stops being a, a, like a, a, a parade of mustaches. I mean, because are we really going to go through the There's whole a couple the scenes of, of FIFA? There's a couple <laughs> scenes of strange sexual tension between yeah. Gerard Depardieu <laughs> and his daughter, I guess. Yeah, yeah. and who ages. <laughs> 30 years in about a five year period <laughs> yeah. where George and Purdue, they're like, yeah, the character's a little older. We'll put some white in his mustache. Her, they just, they pack on the latex. They just yeah. assume that Gerard Depardieu's character just really takes care of himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. or, well, that's why he has a clean living. That's why he has night, a bowl of ice cream when he's accepting bribes from Every Uruguay. night while his daughter is asleep, <laughs> there's a scene where Gerard Depardieu has, has a dish with ice cream in it while he's having a very important meeting with a Uruguayan soccer official. And you can tell that as an actor, he's just waiting for them to say cut so he can eat that ice cream. <laughs> yummy, yummy. Now, I think he goes into his daughter's room when she sleeps at night and kisses her forehead and sucks the youth out of her. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a kind of a daughter of Dorian Gray type situation, or like a what was it like Elizabeth Bathory? Was that the mm-hmm. yeah, yeah type yeah, thing? Yeah, she's, right. he's yeah. bathing in her blood. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Whatever gets the youth. I man. just call her Liz. Oh, mm-hmm. your buds? Yeah, oh. best buds. Liz uh. Baths. <laughs> Liz Baths. <laughs> Liz Baths. Yeah. Uh, but like the amazing, like that? get out of that blood shower. We got to go to the movies, Liz Baths. <laughs> <laughs> was that who Fred Sanford or in the Sanford and Son was saying he was cut when he was faking a heart attack? He was going, Liz Baths, this is the big one. I'm coming, Liz Baths. <laughs> That's right. We're talking about Elizabeth Bathory. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> now, yeah. here's the thing. This was a very boring movie. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, it's a lot, like you're saying, a lot of scenes uh, of meetings, press judgmental. conferences. I would say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Dan, no, Dan, talk about its finer points. Dan, think of one good thing about this movie other than Fisher Stevens and Tim Roth got money from the it. The pod race. <laughs> <laughs> you think of episode one again. <laughs> they did. Uh, okay. Again, episode, Star Wars episode one, which had more sports in it than the FIFA <laughs> movie. That is true. It had an entire pod race. It had like 10 minutes of sports nonstop. Two pod racing pod races, if you count the fight at the end, where Jake Lloyd says, now this is what I call pod racing. Yes. Mm. Which I don't think but, technically within the rules of face fuck that counts. <laughs> Here's the thing. There's no pod racing association to impl- implement uh, the rules. Uh-huh. So Boba could just do whatever he wants. Have flamethrowers yeah, in that's why, thing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is thing. That's why his, uh, his pod <laughs> racing. Pod. I mean, I don't think the flamethrowers are in the pod. I thought they were in no, the they're engines. In, they're in, yeah, well, those are part of the pod, aren't they? Or I guess the uh, pod is the thing in the th- back? These are things that <laughs> the, the do, How do you define what bad, is the pod and what is the engine? That pod fuck. The pod racing <laughs> organization directorate fan club. <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't there to organize this, you know. <laughs> anyway, Dan, give me one good thing about the movie. <laughs> uh, they Irished in as a transition once. That was kind of old timey. That's true. Uh, there's an old timey scene transition element. Uh-huh. Um, I would say that people who specialize in old timey costumes got a lot of work for yeah. this movie, and that's good for them. Oh, yeah. They used wild wildlife. The talking. <laughs> yeah, about. yeah. Another old timey thing. Yeah, Auntie. Now, yeah. Dave, as a soccer fan, sure. I know when the World Cups come around, mm-hmm. you're all like, 
Yeah, cupping it up. Let's do this. That's exactly what, that's exactly what I kick, say. Corner kick. Giants yeah. forever. Yeah, the go Giants. Giants play football. But, yeah. yeah, exactly. That's what they were American talking about. American football. Movie was football. That's true. Now, so, okay. as a soccer fan, do yeah. you feel like this was an accurate portrayal of the history of soccer? Because while we're watching it, you're like, oh, that's when blah, blah, blah happened. Oh, that's when this well, thing happened. Yeah, I was well, impressed, I would, honestly. I, I uh, was very, and also, I don't know how anyone could watch this movie without the David well, Cameron annotations and understand a thing that was. Well, going I was, on. I was going to say that I learned. Less from this movie than I have learned from just like glancing at Wikipedia articles for like a couple minutes at a time because they tell you – like I, I recognized all of the major pivotal or most of the major pivotal points that they were like – events that they were showing. But like there's nothing in this movie that indicates what they are at all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They'll and just show a thing happening. There's a couple like, times yeah, right, when while we were watching it, I was like, maybe I should tell David to save it for the podcast. And I'm like, nah, it's boring. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, wait, what What about Barbosa giving up the goal in the shock loss by Brazil to Uruguay in 1950? It was boring. <laughs> that was a huge upset. That's why I went to become a pirate captain, Dan. The Americana was very depressed. Uh, wait, what was the, your question? The coffee Americana? No, no. The Maracana. That's the stadium in Brazil that they played the 1950 World Cup final in oh, 2014. Oh, the one where it was the biggest tragedy. Yeah, in the exactly. Brazil lost. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's, there, where Jules Rimé, who is not Brazilian, just feels... The pain so devoutly. Well, he's Brazilian at heart, and by what I what I mean by that is he enjoys women's butts. And he yeah, okay. hates just, Uruguay. So I'm Brazilian at heart. <laughs> you're very yeah, much you're so, very Brazilian. Much like Arnold Schwarzenegger in that movie he made where he just goes to Rio for Carnival. <laughs> uh, he enjoy, there's what? That, have you guys never seen this? <laughs> is it in Pumping Iron or something? I don't no, think, it is no, not in a, Pumping it's a Iron. It's Conan the did. Destroyer. Yeah, it's called, <laughs> it's called Conan the Partier. <laughs> there's a thing he did where he's in Rio for Carnival, and there's mm-hmm. some line about... Carnival is a celebration of my favorite body part, the ass. <laughs> and it's something that we used to say at work a lot. Wait, but, what, what was your question, though? I totally forgot. Uh, so, oh, no, the sequence totally where Brazil soccer. loses yeah. is 1950. Okay. And there's something very funny about it. We couldn't quite put our finger on why it was funny, where it just keeps – it shows no on-field play or none. next to none. none. It's showing a lot of people in the stands being excited. You have the announcer announcing it in Portuguese, and you have – these and you just have the sa- shots of people in the same three locations being like, oh, yeah. oh, there's, oh, go. There's like a barber shop and like a bar, a bar, old men and four old men just table. at a table on the street, just in the middle of the street, but yeah. like really well dressed for some reason. Uh, because they're old Brazilian men, they have a sense of style. Fine. Yeah. Um. That's why it's called a Brazilian or getting a Brazilian <laughs> when you're tailored for a nice suit of clothes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but uh, I, but like <laughs> we talked about how little soccer there actually is in this movie, and I like. Until you see it, I cannot stress enough how little soccer there is in a movie that is about soccer. Yeah. It's amazing. There's more I mean, soccer Which in... is weird since they clearly have the rights yes. to all these like highlight reels of soccer games. Yeah. They, they, do, show them. They, they show them. They show, like, they show some of the highlight reels later on, but it's like... That, 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 those they are could have cl- just showed those games and it would have been more exciting than yes, what we watched. that's true. This is like a, mo- a sports movie for like, I don't know, like fantasy football people who are like... You know, what's really interesting is, like, the behind-the-scenes, like, choices that are made. <laughs> yeah, maybe. If they're like, I've watched Moneyball 3,000 times. Yeah. I guess I'll watch something else. But you can also, like, you can make Moneyball almost anything dramatic. I like Moneyball, I want to make too. it clear that Moneyball, Moneyball, Moneyball is fantastic. Person. Yeah, story of, what's his name? Bucky. Billy Bean. Bucky Bledsoe. Bucky Barnes. Bucky they're, Barnes, they're, yeah, yeah. Those might be the names of real people that exist. They are not involved with the Oakland A's. <laughs> uh, it's about Billy Bean. The general yeah, manager. Yeah, the, the, the mascot for the American Bean Farmer. <laughs> no, that is not him. <laughs> I'm Billy Bean. Eat some beans today. <laughs> that is the wrong the person. Beans make you fart. I don't think so. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Billy Beans for beans. Yeah, of course a bean would say that. <laughs> he would say, eat me yummy yummy. <laughs> Billy Bean says beans don't make you fart. But let's look at the facts. Billy Beans, wrong on beans. Wrong for America. <laughs> <laughs> Brought to you by the Council of Enemies of Beans. I don't because, know what that would be. I don't corn, know, Brussels I guess? sprouts or yeah, something. Brussels, but, <laughs> some other thing. Some other something vegetable that, source of that protein. That causes you to fart a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Any leafy greens. Uh, don't don't slander Billy Bean. That's a it's a Mets draft pick. He's a great guy. Okay. <laughs> like person. We've had a lot of fun. I don't know. Here. I don't know if he's a good guy person. I've never met him. Serious. Now, uh, so the movie. Is, but there are a couple scenes like. There are a couple scenes where FIFA is running out of money and it needs something to happen. And Sepp Blatter and can always find it, but like ethically. Sepp Blatter always makes it happen, <laughs> yeah. but they don't show you how it makes it happen. There's a scene where they're like, 
we're running out of money. We need sponsors, but we don't have companies to sponsor us. And the guy goes, hey, that's someone from Coca-Cola at that table over there because they're at a bar. And Step Lardy goes, hold on a second. And we see him walk over the table, cut to, next scene. It's like three years Samuel later. Samuel's swimming. <laughs> oh, yeah, Samuel's, Samuel's, oh, swimming. Samuel's in the swimming pool. And he gets a phone call from Step Lardy that's like, Coca-Cola's going to give us some money. <laughs> Great. You got it. And he hangs up. And it's like, well, what did he – how did he – what did he do? Hey, uh, he's a he's a he's got a silver tongue, man. He's a magic man. He, he knows how to was sell. Given it. to him as a bribe, <laughs> probably. <yeah. laughs> well, no, the best part of that is when uh, Sam Neill is swimming and his like maid assistant daughter. Uh, they didn't say who it was. Comes his out and is just like assistant. whatever. She just comes out and is like Mr. Bladder on the phone. <laughs> and it just sounds like an old man saying to a kid like I gotta go pee. Mr. Bladder's on the phone, <laughs> and he walks into the bathroom. Excuse me, kid. Yeah. Gotta take a collect call from Mr. Bladder. Yeah. They're always collect calls. I'd love to hear this story, but Mr. Bladder's on the phone. I gotta go. Mr. Bladder lives in Florida. <laughs> call me guy who has to pee. Man, Mr. Bladder called four times last night. <laughs> now the because he's a, old. Old people pee a lot. And yeah, yeah, yep, his neighbor, not. Mr. Prostate's acting up. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Now. uh... <laughs> there's, you reminded me of a part that I, oh, there's, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a couple parts too that reinforce the commonly held belief that God, and in this case it's Jesus, uh, is, cares about soccer more than anything else. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a part, there's, there's a part where Gerard Depardieu, he needs help for something and he just kneels and prays, <laughs> <laughs> prays to God in front of a cross. I don't and I guess, what he needed help I don't for. remember what he needed help for. I don't remember if it works. <laughs> It did. FIFA's still here. It worked. Yeah. God loves God, FIFA. And there's a part and where he never died, right? He's still alive. Uh, Gerard Depardieu. Yeah, yeah. Gerard Depardieu is alive. Jules, Jules Jesus did die, no. but he came back. Uh, Jules, uh, that's, that's, that's a matter that's, of yeah. opinion. No, Jules Rimet does die because they show his funeral and the coffin that is definitely not big enough to fit Jules that's Rimet. How I'm assuming he's not dead. Yeah, because they, they <laughs> just. Unless he turns into like a fucking gelatinous <laughs> ooze or something. Or, or yeah, he's like it. this Senator Kelly in X Men. I should say. <laughs> they, they, uh, they, they buried, a, to, to fool people, they buried a box, a coffin full of rocks, which ironically weighed less than he does. <laughs> I was, I was going to say the coffin. The coffin definitely could have fit Jules Rimet, who was pretty. We talked about this earlier. Who was actually pretty skinny in real life. It definitely mm-hmm. could not have fit Gerard Depardieu. Acting so you're saying dude. they use the real coffin? There's also yeah. humor. Tim Roth as Seth Blatter is just looking at a coffin for a couple seconds, and I don't know who that character was. They never introduced that yeah, person. Died Are you sure? I, they might have died. without saying that person's name. He was trying to show the passage of time. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah, it was during the wild wildlife montage. Yeah. I was like, well, I guess that guy's yeah. dead. Every nothing, time you start saying me... that, I think you're going to say wild wild west yeah. so i get really excited like a what like a like a like a, like a yeah. wild i just think nothing makes me think of like a solemn funereal procession like wild wildlife well that's mm-hmm. what we're gonna play a dance funeral yeah mm-hmm. yeah i would appreciate that mm-hmm. sure yeah Oof. but then we're gonna play kokomo <laughs> oh no <laughs> <laughs> that's where you have to spend eternity with that middle-aged guy and the younger woman he's trying to convince to come with him to kokomo <laughs> gross like in aruba jamaica no wait who I want to take? <laughs> Where? <laughs> to Bermuda? I don't know. Bahamas. Well, hey, come on, pretty mamas. Uh, Key Largo, Montego? Is that a place? Yes. Hey, baby, why don't we go? Down to, I hate that song. <laughs> I don't know why, for some Damn, reason. That out. There was like a year when I was growing up as a kid where that song was impossible to avoid. Yeah, because you had fucking full house on all the time. <laughs> that was part of the problem. You're like, I gotta hang out with my well, pals and shit. I'm like, even, even, even uh, yeah, uh, at least I can find solace in full house. You'll never betray me. And no, Uncle Jesse, don't go to that Beat Voice concert. Now the whole family's getting up. He doesn't even need to go to the concert. They just show up to the house all the time. <laughs> it sounded like you said, don't go to that Beef Boys concert. <laughs> well, certainly don't go there. <laughs> Those guys are fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> It's a what is that like a meat based Beach Boys cover I, band? I thought it was. I thought that was like an off brand Fat Boys. <laughs> it's like a it's like a meatloaf. It's like a yeah, it's like a meatloaf, but he's a killer. He's a serial killer. <laughs> Wait, what? That's meatloaf covering cereal killer. <laughs> Beef boys. <laughs> you know what? Yep. I was, I was thinking of the song Psycho Killer. Is, are Beef Boys right for you? <laughs> yeah, what about the song what Psycho about? Killer? I would love to hear Meatloaf cover <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you that. I'm going to go, I can't sleep because my bed's on fire. But I'm a Psycho Killer. <laughs> That's how every meat, Meatloaf song goes. I'm going to sing slow for a little <laughs> bit, but then I'm going to sing fast and I'm going to go like this. That's meatloaf. Yeah. 
Okay. Mr. Lowe, yeah. call him. Please, Mr. Lowe lives in Florida. Call me Meat. <laughs> So soccer, guys. Yeah, so, so, so anybody, simple ladder saves the, the world. And I had a thing I was going to talk about. And you, oh, so <laughs> there's a part. So they're describing that match between the Germans and the Ukrainians. And someone says how hard they, they play. And the guy goes, they say it was like God himself laced up that day. <laughs> and I wish that they had then shown God jumping into the game and just mm-hmm. lacing up his boots and just kicking that ball. <laughs> and then he kicks the ball so hard it knocks Hitler's head off. <laughs> or then... Yeah. Uh, this, I don't know. They, yes, they, if they you just, want something gloss- done right, you have to do it yourself. <laughs> and they, they spend a bunch of time talking about apartheid and South they do, Africa. That's like a consistent thing they bring up is to show how FIFA is so forward-thinking and righteous is they make a big point about how uh, Avalanche wouldn't allow... Avalanche. So- Avalanche, whatever. Just say Avalanche. Avalanche wouldn't allow South Africa to be a member of FIFA even as FIFA expands, they make a big point of talking about how FIFA expands into Africa and Asia under Avalanche and Sepp Blatter's guidance without pointing out that they basically just use that as a tool to keep themselves reelected in perpetuity. But You were saying that like they would arrange for bribes. The, yeah, for they, they would stuff. like they would put money into those countries to help develop the game, but they would make sure that a lot of that money went into the pockets of the presence of the well, federation. They're also, giving, they're also countries. doing honor to them by allowing by, – by making all countries equal, giving them all an equal vote. They're making, putting them on the same foot as like a Germany or the something. Same foot, but they're because it's I, well, uh, we don't talk about hands. But they're, <laughs> but they're not they're not stupid Chop enough those to, off. to think that that's <laughs> not going to benefit them. I feel like there could be a better movie, and I don't yes. know. Yes, yeah. They're... <laughs> you know what? Let me just stop right there. Your hypothesis is correct. We don't even need to test it. I would say there are many better movies. It is conceivably possible to have a better movie than this one. A better movie. Destiny turns on the radio. Better movie. <laughs> right short. I mean, Mr. Ishtar. Destiny. Better, better movie. A better movie on I'll this. I'll name you a better movie about soccer than this movie. Frequency. Ladybugs. <laughs> Ladybugs is a better movie than this movie, and that's a bad movie. A better movie could be made on this topic. I don't know why someone would make a better movie on this topic. Because it's, uh, it's kind I of odd that this reasons. movie was made in the first place. But well, yeah, it was it made, be made was on this it? topic that acknowledges that, like, there was a deal with the devil made that actually, like, had some good come of it. Like, the idea of, like, that this is not all bad, not all good. The, the fact that they, like, did let in these other countries, but also, but for reasons that benefit themselves, well, like, and, like, that's a, the movie, that. the movie that would be is an interesting way to do it. Unfortunately, but, yeah. that would not be the FIFA is the greatest thing yeah. ever. Yeah. And then the movie is, was financed. By FIFA, was, so what? Yeah, I know. FIFA. Crazy. It was fi- it was like twenty nine million dollars or something, which I can tell you were not spent on the soccer scenes, apparently. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's all on the screen. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's all up there when you look at it. In the series of offices it's, they rented. It's an incredibly well polished movie in every part that There's doesn't involve what you care about. Boat. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. Point. That There's a great shot on a boat where Sam Neill looks like Gary Oldman as uh, that smiley guy from Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. Meet smiley. Mm. Yeah, that's his name. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but I was going to say he smiles all the time. They, you know, Smiley from uh, the Lulz movie. They point out they point out multiple times that FIFA wouldn't allow South Africa to be a member nation as long as apartheid was the system in place there. And that's like their one thing to point out that FIFA is like super righteous and they, you know, that they're just trying to show the whole time that FIFA is this benevolent organization that's pulling the world together when it it's not, totally not. Not Sleeping at all. Sleeping on beds of blood diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't even sound comfortable. <laughs> but it's with a, true. With a blanket made no. out Dude, of blood. Well, those high heels aren't comfortable, but you wear them because they make your butt look great. <laughs> Same thing with beds of blood diamonds. <laughs> Good point. Well, your butt is all scraped up. Yeah, I was sleeping on a bed of blood diamonds. Ooh, his butt's so scrapey. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Seal's face is his butt. <laughs> That's me. Sorry. I apologize, Steele. Anyway, I forget if it was Stuart or if it was you or Dan who was saying this looks seems like the movie that they show to new FIFA employees when they, when they yeah. start out. It's that like it, Every couple of minutes, one of the actors should have stopped and looked at the camera and given you a tip about dealing with the customers or mm-hmm. you know what, what proper office there etiquette. Should have been some like bullet points on the screen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I also love how every no meeting can look like n- appropriate and normal. Like There's the meeting where Sepp Blatter I mean, meets with... They're not with... all taking place in like a Mad Max world. Well, yeah, but like... <laughs> there's bikers <laughs> driving around shooting missiles but and like, arrows at each other. But like, there's this meeting where Sepp Blatter meets with the guy from Adidas... To be like, Adidas. yeah, it's tr- sorry, Adidas. 
to meet with uh, Adidas, Adidas. Adidas. Uh, to say like, you know, Adidas wants to have our soccer ball and our uniforms and everything in the next World Cup. And like, that's not crazy. Like having a company pay to it's have that kind of exposure. It's not as crazy as having like Nintendo do that would be. No. They don't make uniforms. But like, <laughs> but like it's a totally. Did. McDonald's is like, we want you to wear McNuggets <laughs> in the next World Cup. That doesn't, well, just on our are, skin. Are you talking about? <laughs> so many together into shirts. I was going to ask if you meant like a McNugget costume or if they actually just took no, McNuggets. No, no. The, McDonald's yep, the so McNugget <laughs> characters who are screaming in pain from being stitched together <laughs> like some kind of weird golem like in that Clive Barker short story. Well, it's like that uh, that, when, that when Freddy lifts up his shirt or whatever and there's a lot of screaming oh, yeah. skull, souls in there. <laughs> and he's shredded. <laughs> it's, yeah, he's he, ripped. He's shredded because he scratched himself with his razor glove and he cut himself. Yeah. But my point is, just I know these... what you meant. He's totally. He's uh. He's got abs for miles, <laughs> for, for days. Uh, yes, but, David. Well, I was just gonna say, that, like these meetings are all presented in this covert, secret way. But like, first of all, they don't it's have to be because of the mustache. Because they're normal, maybe they're normal meetings. But also, like, if you're trying to present a movie about how on the level and great FIFA is, why would you set up all these meetings to be at like a roadside gas station where it looks really creepy and sketchy? Well, also, I feel he- like a lot of those early meetings, they try and make it. They try and make. FIFA seem like an underdog. Like yes. you should be yeah. like rooting for him, which is stupid and crazy. <laughs> well, at the time, no, no. Even at I the can't time, justify I don't that. care. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the main issue: is the movie does not make you care ever if FIFA survives. So, there, so uh, Fisher Stevens is distraught in 1930 because he invested all of FIFA's money in the stock market and it's crashed. And he's like, "We've lost everything. People can never play soccer yeah, again, right, dudes?" They, we, I had to, I had to uh, give the rules to soccer to the best. Bank to pay off the loan. <laughs> now no one will ever know. And it just shows an evil bank man putting the rules in a vault and spinning the dial so it's locked forever and then filling it with concrete so it can never be opened. Now soccer will never be played. Uh, they, uh, they, but at that moment, it's like, there's going to be no FIFA. And my reaction to that was, all right. I mean, whatever. Your club's not open anymore. Okay. We, we, did, we, we didn't share the same reaction to that. Like, I just didn't care. Like, like they didn't, it couldn't even make me care when they were literally on the verge of bankruptcy. Yeah, you know? but that's because that that's because the movie's terrible. The only reason I cared was because I worried that Fisher Stevens might hurt himself because he was so guilty. He did look like he was about to jump off the bridge they were talking about. Pretty on. frail and obsessed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we but, should, if his character dies in the movie, he still gets paid, right? Like the actor? Yeah. Or the, or the yeah. character. No, that's some kind of weird clause, right? That's right. The character dies in a movie, they're just, they pretend they can't see or hear the actor all anymore. Of, uh, yeah. All of those Law & Order corpses never got paid. Yeah, they're there's, dead. Yeah, they got tricked into signing up. Yeah. Steven Seagal walks up to the accounts payable window at a, for executive decision, and, and he's like, <laughs> he's like uh, my, my money, please? Is that... Steven Seagal's character was a decision. I can't. I wish he was here. We have money to give him, but he died in the beginning Spoiler. of the movie. Spoiler! Yeah. Oh yeah. Sorry. Come on. I, I didn't mean to spoil a movie no one has watched in fifteen years. I that is one of my favorite movies to watch on cable TV when it is on. Um, no, I yeah, but I on first right. dates. Yeah, on first dates. <laughs> like I want to show you this movie that the poster made me assume that Kurt Russell was holding a katana, but that's actually <laughs> the, the wing of I mean, the stealth place. bomber. <laughs> Is it my <laughs> evil David Suchet in it? I mean, what else do you want? My, uh, my... Oh, I'm so, okay, I apologize. It's the best movie ever. <laughs> Thank you, Elliot. This movie is better than United Passions. <laughs> On a scale from United Passions to zero, I give it off the charts. Well, what am I, do you know, one of my favorite things about Executive Decision, though, since we're on the topic, is that like it was considered this like big-time project, and Paramount. What do you mean, big time? Like, like, but like, big, no, like, when it was, like the big dig. I don't know. No, no, like, like when it was first, Canal. When it was first being made, or when it was like in development. The executive is like, this is a big time project. It was. Let's <laughs> fast track it. It was considered. Oh, uh, sir, this executive decision movie is that one of our little time projects? Oh no! This is, oh no, but Callahan, that is a big time project. Should we build the Colossus of Rhodes or make executive decision? <laughs> well, sir, we can't do both. We can't build both your pyramid tomb uh, burn and burn down the and, library of Alexandria and do executive decision. I guess my soul is just disappearing to the winds. Then you guys are don't worth, impossible nope. to sit you around know what? It's and talk about long stuff thought, with. Don't bother building a vessel for my car so that I may travel to the next world. Make executive decisions. <laughs> I think sitting with all of you is what you've made to ev- you've made everyone think sitting with me is the like. It has two folders on his desk, and one says "flight to Mars," and the other says "executive decision starring Kurt Russell." 
<laughs> and he's like, boys, I don't know what to tell you. I gotta go with this Kurt Russell movie. <laughs> Well, <laughs> sorry, Mars. Maybe thing, some other time. The thing I was going to say about executive you decision really is no longer funny. <laughs> so, forget it. No, no, but it's, no, it's, it's supposed not supposed to be a big time project. It, and <laughs> Paramount had the rights, and they sold it. Or no, like they sold it to 20th Century Fox, and 20th Century Fox in exchange. <laughs> The boringest story I've ever heard. And we just watched United Nations. Just give it a chance. The movie. Finish the story. The movie. The boring story. No, it's going to be like one of those Paul Harvey stories where we'll, afterwards we'll know the rest of the story. The movie that Paramount got in exchange for getting rid of this was Forrest Gump. And, uh, oh, wow. and, and now you funny. know the rest yeah, of the Yeah, exactly. Story. Um, and if they hadn't made that, we never could have had Kevin Nealon in Forrest Gump 2 Gump again in the movie <laughs> Cecil B. Demented. Yes. Uh, I think I think Dan wanted to wrap this up. But I, yeah. I, well, I just want to say at the end of the movie. Yeah, I, I was sure we would have missed. We would have missed that, that real corker of a tail. <laughs> <laughs> all right, fuck all of you. Um, can you, but the end can you write the, that down so I can share it with my children? <laughs> oh, no, no, if that, call up your publisher now. Uh, tell them you know what your next book is, and then call up somebody. Oh, God. And tell them they need to hear this tale. Just call me. I think this whole episode was just set up as vengeance <laughs> to try and make me pay for irritating you all for so long. <laughs> Uh, oh, so we appreciate uh, your soccer and your executive the, decision expertise. Uh, uh, yeah, FIFA the, the movie the, starring soccer. Okay, we really need to get to um, United Passions. The FIFA <laughs> movie. Oh, we gotta get <laughs> fire final, it up. Final well, judgment. Smash cut. Kids playing soccer. Oh, then God. FIFA shows up, and Tim Roth says, <laughs> yeah, "Game no. on, well, boys!" No, the, best, the best thing Blinks about into the camera. Ow! I, I just, bump, bump, I just, bump, bump. I just have to say is the end of the movie is Sepp Blatter dealing with uh, like thoughts of corruption and all the European football heads being like, "You're going to lose this election in 2002 in Seoul," and he's like, "I will be okay." And then he wins the election, rebuking. You know, all the corruption that he has faced when, like... Through no effort on his own. Exactly. And considering that in real life, it is very clear... Like, he's suspended from being president right now. We all know he's incredibly corrupt. It just rang incredibly hollow, and I found that enjoyable. Even if it didn't ring hollow, it's just he does nothing to defend himself... So there's no reason why we should be like, oh, great, he isn't corrupt, I guess. Well, right. but the music gets really loud, though. He doesn't though, even so. earn it. No, yeah, there's true. this triumphant music. Yeah. The triumph of the sip. There's like four different scenes in this movie with triumphant music out of nowhere And they're for all no reason. at announcements. <laughs> yeah. Not even at soccer matches. They're at <laughs> announcements of where yeah. things are going to be held. Again. Or I, who's winning an election. I cannot say this enough that there is almost no soccer in this movie about soccer. Do you like soccer? Don't watch this movie. Yeah. Well, I you think like soccer movies. I think <laughs> Killer goes, "What's your favorite soccer movie?" <laughs> United Passions. Uh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I just think that maybe their hope was that because a lot of people that don't like soccer, the knock on it they say is that it's boring. Yes. So I hope I think that FIFA's hope was that by watching this movie, those people who thought soccer was boring would be like, "Oh, can't we at least just watch soccer now?" Because mm-hmm. that would point. be that would be more interesting than watching this movie. <clears throat> yeah. Final judgments. Final. Was this judgments. a good, great movie, best movie ever, or <laughs> no. burn all the other movies? Or we only need three this soccer balls! Hooray! <laughs> was, this <a> good bit? <laughs> was this movie a goal? <laughs> In one. <laughs> good, bad movie. A bad, bad movie, or a movie you kind of liked. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna say that for an hour, I thought this was a good, bad movie. Because when it was all mustaches and it was all mustaches <laughs> and just like yeah, like old timey like yeah, it's enjoyably silly <laughs> at that point. The best mm. like the most important thing we can do for society <laughs> is to create a governing body so that <laughs> all the nations can play this footed ball with one another <laughs> and then And we can get paid dudes. <laughs> but then after that it just got boring. <laughs> so I don't know. If you if yeah. Why don't you check out an hour of it if you can see it for free and then turn it off and do something else? That's my recommendation. I'm going to say don't watch this movie. It's super bad. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go with Stuart on super this one, boring. Um, If I'm... you want to leave something on, on the TV while you go to the bathroom for an hour and a half, 
uh, and then hours. just wa- yeah, I guess two hours. I don't know, dude. I would say- the bathroom for two hours? <laughs> what are you doing in there? You've got a bigger problem than what movie should I watch? Uh, see, God damn it, I'm referring to the length of the movie. Unless you just don't want to see the movie, so you're just staying in the bathroom till it's over. <laughs> I'm just, you open the door just a little bit. You see to Tim Roth on the screen, you go, ah! and then shut the door again. I would there do- is a monster at the end of this book, and its name is Grover. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> um, I, uh, I, would, I would not even recommend leaving the movie on while you're out in case someone has bugged your apartment and you don't want to force them to have to sit through it. I would say that uh, I enjoyed watching it with you guys. And there was a bit of oh, thanks, sh- bro. Sure thing. And there's a bit, a bit of schadenfreude that I enjoyed knowing that this movie cost like $30 million. And I think it grossed like 300 in the United States. It's, I think... I mean, not counting movies that made zero money that were not right. released, it seems to be on record, whoever's keeping these records, as the least money-making movie <clears throat> in United States history, possibly. And, the, yeah. and that was, Adjusted for that was probably just paid for by people to go go into the movie theater and go BM or... I think there's... <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I, gotta be, I gotta buy a ticket to use your bathroom? Fine, I'll take one ticket to whatever. <laughs> I gotta spend two hours in the bathroom. I well, might as well be in a movie theater. Well, there was a... There, I think there was a theater... I need, I, it's so hot out. You know, the movie theater's air-conditioned, and I can it's just so murder myself in the, in the theater and <laughs> someone else will clean it up. Yeah. There, was, there was a theater... I think on the Wikipedia page it says there was a theater in Phoenix that literally sold one ticket to one of its showings. So and that was it. That was yeah. probably a bad thing. Anyway, um, I mean, I, I, the I, screening of Spectre I was in the other day had two tickets sold. So it's, really, yeah. Well, I it was also like a 1:05 p.m. screen. Yeah, yeah, like a month like after it came after. out. <laughs> yeah, it's been out for a while. I, I anyway, I had fun watching it with you guys because we were all similarly frustrated by it. But Thank uh, you, bro. yeah, but it's dog shit. It's a bad, bad movie. Yeah. I would not watch it again. Yeah, I would not. I definitely would not recommend it. <laughs> Watching it without the annotations. You say as, washing it? I wouldn't as, wash it <laughs> at all. Yeah. As Stu said, you need the David Kalin annotations or else you're not going to be able to follow a lot of it, too. Yeah. I knew everything that was happening in it, and I had trouble following it. So that shows you how terrible it is. Soccer! Uh, woohoo. Hey, you like t-shirts, right? How about a mug? Are your walls looking a little bare? Visit MaxFunStore.com and cover all of these bases and more. We just added some amazing new shirts and posters. So visit today and outfit your home and torso with the freshest MaxFun merch. MaxFunStore.com Hey, it's Dan here. Um, Thanks to all you crazy people, we sold out our Bell House live show in Brooklyn on uh, Friday, January the 15th within five days. And so, due to popular demand, we have added a second show on Saturday, January 16th, the very next day. Doors open at 6 p.m., show at 6.30 p.m., tickets $12 at the Bell House in beautiful Gowanus, Brooklyn. You may ask us, uh, will we be watching the same movie or will there be a different movie? There will be a different movie. Although all of our comedy routines, except for Stewart's, who is an overachiever, will be the same before the show. Uh, so, two different shows, which means I assume that there will be some out there who will like to come to both shows. That's fine. We encourage it. Please, if you're crazy enough to want to come to both shows, do so. However, if you have a ticket for the first show, maybe hold off for a day or two and give someone who is not so lucky the first time around a chance to get a ticket. We would uh, like to provide the opportunity for the widest variety of people to see the shows. So links to uh, buy tickets for the show will be up on our website, flophousepodcast.com, or on the Bell House uh, website. That's www.thebellhousenewyork. That's just NY, sorry. Thebellhouseny.com. And uh, we hope to see you there in January. Thanks. But now we should move now on. We do. The letters from listeners. Whew. Um, I this will be fun. Hey guys, <laughs> I had a I had a bit. I had a, <laughs> I had a, <laughs> doesn't sound fun. <laughs> yeah, usually things when when they're introduced that way end up not being fun. I had a busy day at work today, and so I didn't get to choose letters. 
Oh so, boy. Oh boy. The old random mailbag. So you're saying you usually usually just spend your time at work looking at letters for your <laughs> podcast? Uh, I do. <laughs> Dan, everybody knows you spend most of the day posting to Facebook and the Flophouse Facebook group. Um, it's true. So I didn't have time to screen things. So we're going to play a little game called I'm going to read the first four letters that come up mm. in the Flophouse. Hey, everybody, folder. it's America's favorite game. The game called I'm going to read the first four letters in the Flophouse folder. It's called Letter Roulette. Did you send a letter to Dan in the last 10 minutes? Because it's you did. Yes, you did. If you did, we'll be reading it now. It's America's favorite game. Not soccer. All right, so this... Because America uh, doesn't like hey, soccer. Hey, real quick, I want to jump here and give thanks <laughs> to... America <laughs> does like soccer. I want to make that I clear, too. thanks to uh, <laughs> the MLS Cup listener this Andrew Ortiz and all the other Houston, uh, Houston floppers out there. Oh, uh, Andrew, thanks for sending me the, uh, the cassette mixtape. For the uh, horror movie marathon you guys showed, the heavy metal horror movie marathon you guys showed down at the Alamo Draft House. Uh, thanks for the mixtape, dog. All right, all right well, okay, you, Dan, are you done turn. with whatever bullshit man was? <laughs> wow, way to make uh, your I'm listeners just thinking, you know, listen yeah, maybe your I'm listeners just feel like shit. Up a bit, and now you just you, uh, okay. And I also want to give thanks <laughs> okay. to uh, I want to give thanks to Ashley Shannon, Flop House <laughs> listener Ashley Shannon, who was kind enough to not only print off a copy of the contest winner's entry, but also put it in a lovely frame that matches the decor of my bar that will open someday, hopefully. Otherwise, I will totally murder myself. (laughs) Uh, So, Ashley Shannon, thank you so much. It looks beautiful. Uh, Expect to see tons of pictures of it on the Internet. All right. Okay, and so, I just want to jump in here uh, and give a thanks to all of our brave men and women serving in America's fighting forces. That's really brave of you to say, Elliot. You know, I just, I feel like they don't go noticed enough. So, this first letter is from... I would like to thank... Uh, oh, God. No, that's all right. David's Sorry. getting no. in the interrupting. No, 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 no. no, no. high five, Dave. Dave. Yeah, do it. Go through Dave. it. Do a yeah, whole bit. This is a safe space. All right. <laughs> Um, Except for Dan, I, I would I would like to uh, thank the New York Mets, who I know you didn't go all the way this year, which Elliot reminds me about all the time. I, oh, I was about to right. But, I was about to thank the Kansas City Royals uh, for playing their hearts out and just taking advantage of every error made by that other team. I don't remember. Oh, who they shit. were like there were, they were, they were like three. <laughs> no, you don't know what you were talking about. <laughs> Errored the shit out of that uh, thing. Error. Daniel Murphy lets one fucking ball go under his glove. All right, I'm losing everybody hey, now. Hey, poor um, catching, son. What's your name? Murphy. Anyway, <laughs> all, I tell people all you can hope, all you can hope is that a team you care about gives you a reason to care, and this year they did. And next like, all year, all you can hope is that you find next, someone next, to love and who loves you, and you <laughs> cling tight to them. You just cling tight. I'm talking about realistic you things. Just cling, you just cling wrap. You nobody's cling nobody's gonna love me, Dan. <laughs> oh, <damn this. laughs> okay, so this has been the Flophouse <laughs> Podcast. I've been um, Dan McCoy. <laughs> oh, I've been really a Kaylin. <laughs> Something's wrong. <laughs> I can't put my finger Ms. on it. Dan, who do you have to thank? Right. Uh, I have to thank this first letter writer. <laughs> oh, writes, come on. <clears throat> Dear Dan. <laughs> this is from Irvin, last name withheld. W- Welsh. Wait. Magic Johnson? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Amazing. Slogging through the back catalog, mo- much to my magic. girlfriend's displeasure, uh, mostly because she finds Elliot's voice annoying, I heard a hey, great bit of wisdom. Yeah, a lot in common with my family. Carefully curated letter selection. <laughs> you know, I, another thing I don't like about Elliot. <laughs> I heard a great bit of wisdom on the Atlas Shrugged episode. Elliot said, to paraphrase, people always warn you about a slippery slope, but you know what a slippery slope is? A water slide, and it is great. <laughs> I thought that shit brilliant. I ran to my girlfriend to share, and after I told her what Elliot said, she replied, I hate him. (laughs) Stewart is still my favorite. That's from Irvin, last name. I don't talk as much. Um, Well, I guess discuss. I don't know what to do. It seems not like. Thanks. I think that's a great letter. (laughs) Yeah, that was a fantastic letter. Well, my family likes me mostly, except for my brother. Well, I mean, I like you. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks. So, growing up, was Elliot's voice always annoying? Oh, yeah. Very much so. Always. But he didn't, like, use it as much. Now you guys give him way too much free reign. That's, no, that's, I mean, I was not a confident child in many ways. I was not a confident <laughs> adolescent. It really took getting into college and realizing that uh, 
it was fun to be irritating <laughs> to get me to talk as much as. And you all also started that creatine program where you got yeah, super ripped. You got huge. Yeah, you know, I was really into bodybuilding. Yeah. I was kind of the Tom Noonan of the area. I uh, really, really got really got into bodybuilding, and then uh, I just stopped. I wasn't interested uh, well, anymore. When we were kids, you, you, you changed your entire wardrobe to Zubaz <laughs> and those big dog t shirts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was all into whatever branded T-shirts I could wear. Life's a Beach. Uh, what was those ones where it was like... Bad Boys Club is what you're thinking of. <laughs> was like, what were the ones about like... the, the Co-ed the, Naked Volleyball? No, the, like the, he who <laughs> wins with the most Johnson. toys wins or something like that. Uh, I mean, that sounds like a T-shirt. There was, there was ones sure. where... Uh, it would be like uh, I heard you though, Dan. Would enormous be like, Johnson wore great T-shirts. Yeah, those were the, <laughs> an enormous silhouette of a basketball player who's like wow. coming at you. Uh, uh, is yeah, that like a Space that Jam thing? No, it was not a Space Jam. When I was in Japan this summer, they had Space Jam t-shirts for sale in their department store. I think and, and I'm you, not, bought, you bought four of them and you're about to give them to us. I, thought, I thought about Space it. Space Jam sh- shirts that were worn by schoolgirls. <laughs> probably. They're <laughs> vending machines. I was going to say, when we were kids, though, I was probably the more irritating one. No. I know it's hard Even, to believe. Get out of here. I know. <laughs> I know. So, Dan, what's the second random letter that's going to be about insulting me? Okay. It's, it's, it's titled, Stuart Gets the Shaft. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a weird start. <laughs> yeah. I'm writing to exp- express my displeasure with a trend I've noticed over the last several months. When listeners write into the show, <laughs> they direct questions regarding cinema, history, writing, and philosophy to Dan and Elliot. Where Stuart gets questions along the lines of, if you were going to fuck a sandwich, which would it be? (laughs) Wait, did you get asked that? It's pulled pork every time. (laughs) I'd like to turn the tables here and throw a thoughtful question at my favorite peach. What is the metaphysics of this sandwich that you're having sex with? Pause it real quick so I can figure this out. Stuart, there's a bunch of movies out there that upon first release were given negative reviews, but received much more positive reviews in later years. Like United Passions. Walter Hill's The Warriors is one that comes to mind. Any movies you think got a bad rap that people will eventually come around to love in the future? Dan and Elliot. If you were going to fuck a sandwich, which one would it be? Tuna fish. Thanks for years of laughter, Zach. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go egg salad, but <laughs> um, I think I mean I think the most obvious one, at least to me, would be uh, would be John Carter of recent years. Not that John Carter's the greatest movie, but it was really maligned by critics who saw the terrible box office results and started just shitting on it. And even before it came <clears throat> out, they they wanted to take down this expensive movie. Yeah, exactly. And I think I mean I'm not going to say it's the best movie in the world. Don't edit that and change that, Elliot. Uh, but I, I mean, I think for a like a, a big space adventure, I think it's pretty great, and it's got big rig in outer space. Sure, yeah. Huh. Dan, maybe the two of us could double team like a hoagie, like a wanna, like a party sub. Let's not talk about double teaming anything. You guys could high five each other while it's happening. <laughs> exactly. No. That's and the we're thing. not the, being the, demeaning because it's a sandwich. So it's and like, the fun part is I, that you guys could like look into each other's eyes. And you could maybe wa- talk. Yeah, we could talk about what's going on. <laughs> unless in our lives. we're watching the movie Dumble Team, I don't want to talk about Dumble Team. Is that Dumble Team? Dumbledore? Yeah, that's right. Him and Dennis Rodman were a great team. Dumbledore. Yeah. I'm just really glad the that sandwich question wasn't asked of me. I mean, Dumbledore is gay. No, that's what yeah. I'm saying. The gay Dumbledore. Dumbledore. <laughs> Dumbledore goes fishing. <laughs> there you go. Um, so <laughs> the, the magic is that he's standing on his knees. <laughs> <laughs> I've made I've made the lower half of my legs disappear <laughs> through the power of shoes on knees. <laughs> through the power of kneeling. <laughs> I made it a whole character. Yeah, that's right. It was I. I watched those commercials all the time when I was a kid, and it wasn't until I went. I was on a USO tour of Afghanistan, and we were in a USO uh, like recreation facility for soldiers, and had like thirty minutes to kill. And we they, this huge selection of videos, and one of them was Dorf goes fishing, and we watched some of it. And it was the only time I'd ever really seen Dorf. And I was like, this is terrible. <laughs> This is not what I was led to believe for all those commercials. <laughs> the nonstop hilarity on display in those commercials. I expected better of Tim Conway. They put Neeling. all the good stuff in the commercials. <laughs> <laughs> just like, just like United Passions. Yeah, well, I never saw a commercial for it. Oh. That's why it you don't, failed. Yeah. You don't read as many soccer blogs <laughs> as I do. I guess. Dan, read us another letter, won't you? Put this back on the table. Yeah. Uh, so next in this. Delightful game that we're playing. Uh, is from Rebecca, last name withheld. The movie. 
who <laughs> De Mornay. It's titled <laughs> The First Mrs. De Winter. It's titled What the <laughs> Fuck. Uh, this it's is a podcast. Wow. It stars Mark Harmon <laughs> in <No>. summer school. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> she writes, this is not a letter. This is an email. Those goddamn songs have been a lie. And that's it. So, what? I mean, I oh, wasn't man. singing about this letter. Speak to that. <laughs> oh, Speak to that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, it holds you, up a real hand mirror. You guys do get actual snail mail stuff sometimes, yeah, though. Yeah, we, we read one last, yeah, last I just, episode. I just read some snail mails I got. Yeah. Got mail from a snail. <laughs> Let no one <laughs> like, say the Postal Service isn't still amazing. Dear the Flophouse, can you please tell people to stop... Eating Salting us me. and putting me putting salt on me. Just because I'm a male and a female doesn't mean I can have sex with myself. <laughs> Love a snail. How many escar- A period snail. The A stands for Archibald. How much escargot do you think uh, Gerard Depardieu ate before this movie was made? Before he- the movie, like through his whole life? <laughs> no, no. I like in preparation. I don't know. That's a, it's, it's like, <laughs> in preparation. Yes. It's like he was studying. Yeah, exactly. He said, like, "You know what the world needs is a fat Jules Rimet. It, 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 Even though that's not play, a real yeah, thing. To play a FIFA executive, I must think like a FIFA executive, <laughs> which I assume means eating delicious food all the time. <laughs> Who wouldn't believe a man who's obsessed with soccer would be enormous and probably unable to play the game? I mean, the the. <laughs> I need to be slow and. Hard to uh, not be slimy. I will have to eat snails to gain the power of the snails. I will create a shell out of human fat around my body and carry it with me like a house. I'll be able to retract into it at hard or stressful times in my life. Uh, Gerard, I don't think you understand how human bodies work. He just needs to eat enough so that it looks like he is retracting into the shell. Oh, now come now. He hasn't done it yet. He's a normal man. <laughs> he just has large appetites. He's not a freak of nature. He's just a large man. What this you're is saying is bogus. Pretty, it's the movie <laughs> Bogus. Jordan <laughs> Depardieu. Look, my father, the hero, would not stand oh, for this. God. I'll have to give you a green card uh, for this foul. Is that worse than a red card? <laughs> it's way worse. Oh, it means God. It's go. a personal file. A red yeah. card means stop doing what you're doing. Green card says go to jail. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I'm sorry I even opened this door. Ugh. <laughs> to the I, last metro. <laughs> I say, Cyrano to you, sir. <laughs> um, French movies that I don't remember right now. <laughs> this last letter of the evening. Oh, I thought that was the last letter. It's from Riley, last name withheld. <laughs> and she writes... Uh, I literally just woke up from a dream, whereupon I was sitting with my... <laughs> What? <laughs> just, just go on. An interesting on. way to start an le- email. I won't call them letters anymore. Sorry. I literally Rebecca. just woke up from a dream whereupon I was sitting with my three favorite peaches. Stuart <clears throat> turns on a film and it begins with a green field and blue sky. What is this, I ask? A small baby in a wagon pulls on screen. I don't remember what he said. I look up the film. Elliot. Oh, just wait. You'll see. And plot twist. The film is the only of the three recommendations of power I've not seen. Head of the Family. I don't know if Head of the Family starts this way, but I guess my subconscious thinks it does. What's weirder is I have my first Flophouse dream off the back of three days of journalism in Syrian refugee camps <laughs> on the <laughs> island of Coast Greece. All my best, Riley. So, Whew. well, uh, I'm pretty sure Head of the Family begins with a shot of a model house. <laughs> <laughs> Like uh, a model house or a, a house that is a model? A like house a house where, that's a model. A house where models live, like in the hit reality show Model House. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what Elliot said. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's a house that's filled with tiny house. models. Mm-hmm. Models of, I don't know, hobbits, uh, Boba Fetts. <laughs> <laughs> like mini figs. Yeah, mini figs. Is that a couple like a, of Lego dudes, is that like a, a tank. A fig that's not big enough to put in a Newton? <laughs> <laughs> Huh. That's right. At the at the <clears throat> quality control for Fig Newtons, they're like, this is not a Newton fig. Away with you. And they throw it into the Newton. <laughs> you compactor. sound like you're in FIFA or FIGFA. <laughs> the Fig, fig organization. Oh, please. Come on. This is a serious organization. <laughs> Sorry. So Dan, 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 Dan how old is the is federal? Fig is not for <laughs> fifth a <cookie>. fuck? <laughs> <laughs> it's picked by the Federal Investigative oh, General right. for 
Whoa. Oh. Uh, federal investigative yep. general yeah. the big football club? Fuck assembly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't know what it does. <laughs> I don't know, but I like the sound of it. So, Dan, um, when was the last time you had a dream where we were all in it? I Including don't think me. That's ever happened, honestly. We're no, all what? Weird. I have dreams about you guys all the time. Really? We're hanging out, uh, just being really good friends. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever had any dreams that just or include me? Or yeah, nightmares, yeah. whatever you want to call it. I don't know. Are you asking me? Both of you. Anybody. I'm sure I've been in dreams of Elliot's. Uh, yeah. Maybe I don't. I don't really remember many dreams that involve. I've been your brother for three members. decades. There had to have been one somewhere. Maybe I probably forgot. Oh, I mean, hurts. I remember very well the dream. Did I, you have a dream where, you... where Dan died? That was a terrible dream. Did you ever have wow. a dream where you guys are arm <laughs> Way wrestling? Way to make this sad. Know. What? Where... Are you just trying to get us to arm wrestle right yes. now? I mean, there's only way to <laughs> one to find out if this is a dream or not. Oh. <laughs> just watch out. I might turn my hat around to go over the top. <laughs> If only there was an arm wrestling committee that would decide if that's against <laughs> yeah, the rules uh, or not. But there it is. is we, <laughs> we, <laughs> we will be. <laughs> <laughs> we need a bunch of people with generic European accents to explain to us how Wait, to do slap this. Slap these old timey mustaches on. <laughs> We're going to form this organization, whether the English like it or not. <laughs> 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 The English are like, yeah, whatever. Have your arm wrestling. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. So, guys, this is the part of the podcast where we uh, do we do recommendations now. That's right, Stu. This is the part of the You're podcast really where control. we you're large and in charge. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if it's up to us, we've got to take control. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Ghostbusters two. Yes. <laughs> Uh, so a uh, wise uh, man once uh, said that his name was Robert Brown. <laughs> his name was Ghostbusters too. Uh, so this is where we recommend. <laughs> As a wise man once said, they do what they want to do, play what they want to play, live how they want to live. That man's name, Adam's family. <laughs> Hammer. <laughs> huh. The MC stands for Adam's family. He threw people off the scent of his real name by using fake letters. <laughs> wow. So, Wait, uh, the letters were? Yeah, MC. Yeah, what? I mean, the MC, he said his real initials were AF Hammer, Adam's family Hammer. But he was like, I don't want people to learn my real name because then they'll have power over yeah. me because I'm a demon. So I'll, <laughs> so I'll tell people my name is MC Hammer yeah. and they'll, they'll be guessing. He looked at a picture of MC Ganey and he's like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> We look similar. Yeah. yeah. They look pretty similar. Uh, so wait, we're doing recommendations? Because what, he had a poster of MC Ganey up on his wall? <laughs> That's right, from yeah, Tiger yeah. Beat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, to pull the stables out, put that up there next to Stacy Keach. <laughs> Tiger Beat series of Under, Joe uh, Old Man. Underneath his flowers <laughs> booth. <laughs> So sexy. It was was like William Devane. It was like (laughs) such a proud day for Dean Norris when he when he finally got that Tiger (laughs) Bean poster. (laughs) He knew he'd made it that day. Or like Brian Dennehy, is he also in this yeah. group of people? Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. Sure, Brian yeah. Dennehy, Paul Sorvino, James Gandolfini, all these guys. <laughs> so how, do you, how do you have so many portly middle-aged actors like ready on recall? <laughs> That's just what I think about a lot. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. So wait, hold on, recommendations. This is where we recommend movies that you should watch instead of the movie that we wasted our time with. <laughs> Thanks for uh, considering time with me away, Stan. That's really cool. Oh, boy. Man. Oh, okay. Boy. This is going to make Thanksgiving awkward if it hadn't Ooh. already happened and you're from different families. <laughs> but he still came to your Thanksgiving. Please stop by afterwards. Yeah. Uh, just for a, a peek uh, behind the curtain. An old uh, hair of the turkey. Uh, yeah. A turkey was full why of did hair. You, yeah, why did you wow, eat yeah. Hairy turkey. <laughs> I was going to say the turkey was pretty good, but I didn't know it had hair in it. It was covered in hair. That's disgusting. Thanks, Al. So, so another one for the record books. <laughs> <laughs> we're, not done, we're not done yet. We still haven't done our last Can segment. someone do recommendations? Okay, so I'm going to recommend a movie that you should watch. Uh, hey, guys, do you like soccer? <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't you pull up a movie called Shaolin Soccer, oh, which is yeah. as uh, different from the movie we just watched <laughs> as any possible movie you'll ever watch. Uh, Shaolin Soccer is a, mm. I guess, a... Uh, uh, is it Chinese, I guess? I think it's Chinese, yeah. Um, it's directed, written and directed and starring Stephen Chow. 
uh, who is a, I guess, a Looney Tunes of a performer. Um, it is a martial arts movie that is filled with a ton of uh, special effects where a young man uh, joins a soccer team made up of all Kung Fu masters and they play against the evil team who use drugs to make them supernaturally good at soccer. Uh, yeah, it's a super crazy ass movie. You should totally watch it. It's fast paced. It's funny. It's filled with funny traditional uh, Chinese nicknames where they'll call the the heavyweight guy the the heavyset guy Fatso and things like that. At least in the uh, the subtitled version I watched. <clears throat> uh, there's a lot of dancing. I totally recommend it. Shaolin Soccer. It's a fun movie. Uh, you don't have to like soccer to watch it. No. Or Shaolin's. What, yeah, what although hap- that helps. <laughs> it certainly helps. What happens in it does not really resemble soccer very closely. So it's, so. Like United it's, 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 it's closer to <laughs> soccer than this movie was. Okay. I will give in you that. that. someone kicks a ball. Yeah, in that there is somebody kicking a ball. I mean, Kung Fu Hustle is closer likes, to soccer yeah. in this movie. <laughs> I think Which somebody is kicks a ball so hard, people's like clothes rip off. So yeah. I think it's pretty accurate. That's I played true. soccer for a lot of years. Right. It's sexy. Now I played zapped soccer, and that used to happen a lot. Uh, I want to recommend a movie. It... <laughs> <laughs> Just like that's the concept that you're thinking. Like, I want to recommend a movie. <laughs> I really would like what? to, but I can't. So, moving on. I'm contractually obligated to recommend a trailer for a TV show. No, I, uh, <laughs> I watched a movie that I got uh, uh, one of the many award screeners. I sat down and watched Steve Jobs. Oh, I still haven't watched that one yet. Um, you know, I'll say, I'll say this about the movie. I think that it's hampered by high expectations. The last time Aaron Sorkin wrote a movie about a... Uh, tech wizard. It was the social network and it was terrific. And this is not that movie. Um, this is, uh, this is, and there was, I feel like there's a lot of expectations about this movie. Like, this Danny might be, Boyle directing it, right? Yeah, yeah, he's a great director. I think that people Danny thought, Boyle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Good the stuff. Oscars, the Oscars are calling. Well, that's what I, that's what I was going to say. I feel like they thought that this was going to be a big Oscar contender and then it sunk like a stone. Uh, in like movie an Emma theaters. Stone, if you tie um, a stone to her. Is she feet. in this movie? No, but it, she, she'll she sink if you make her. <laughs> she, <laughs> sure. sank, she sank like a Chris Rock. So she's not a witch. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Like a regular avalanche. What was that guy's name? Avalanche. Bruce Valanche. Bruce yeah, Avalanche. Bruce, Bruce Valanche. That's who it was. Um, he was the, Bruce Valanche, the third president of FIFA. <laughs> yeah. I guess seventh, sorry. It's my time to write all those Academy quips. <laughs> but uh, it's a fun movie. I will say this. It's a... Uh, it, it's a movie that really feels like a play, which is no surprise since uh, Sorkin started out as a playwright, but it's structured like a play. It's basically Steve Jobs having conversations with the same sort of six figures that are important to his life. Um, Mini figs. At di- like, it's, it's literally <laughs> split into... It's literally split into three acts, and each of the acts is before a big product launch in his... Career and he has conversations with the same six people at different times in his career, and structurally, that's kind of like fun to watch. Like it really is like watching a glossy uh, Broadway play that's well turned but not very deep. <clears throat> so if you want to watch sort of an entertaining thing that's a little like a, a chamber piece, let's call it. Uh, I enjoyed Steve Jobs. Yeah, the structure sounded interesting to me. Not interesting enough to get me to the old movie theater. No. <laughs> I mean, I would like to watch it. I'm more, it's a weird, I mean, I'm going to, but it's a weird movie where I, I am more interested in the structure than the subject matter. Yeah. Like, I don't find Steve Jobs to be that particularly interesting a person. I just want to see if we can find out once and for all if Michael Fassbender is a better actor than Ashton Kutcher. <laughs> That's a good it question. It is the first time they've gone yeah, head to head. Well, I mean, exactly. Ashton Kutcher did make his own version of Shame. But yeah. it was a little different. And then, there, and then there was that season of Two and a Half Men where Michael Fassbender was starring in it. It was a very dark season. Yeah. <laughs> it really saw was. his penis a lot. There was that season of that 70s show where Asher Kutcher's character wore a giant paper mache head the whole time. <laughs> oh. It was weird. Uh, it was an android. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, yeah. He got into a he fish played, tank. He played yeah. Peter O'Toole. That's it. That's my record. That's, Dave looked at me like, is that it? Yeah, well, it's well, not I'd, great, but it's very enjoyable. Hey, well, Dave, this is your first time on the show. This yeah. is time for you to recommend a movie. <laughs> oh, like, oh, man. You make the call. Well, I was, I was Other than at, fucking Moneyball, because I've already I'm not going to recommend Moneyball. 
I was I was I was looking at Moneyball to Mo Money Mo Ball. <laughs> I was looking at a uh, uh, Dan. You can't recommend Mo Money either because I've recommended that like seventeen <laughs> times. I was looking at Dan because he looked Stacey at me Dash like is a treasure. Like Dave, it's your turn. But I wasn't sure if like, Dash to the theaters to see Stacy in this one. I wasn't sure if Elliot was supposed to go first or what. No, you go, I'll go last. Okay. Um. I actually I have uh, I have two movies because. Everybody, uh, cl- including <laughs> including these co-hosts, <laughs> everybody's expecting me to recommend something sports-related, so I'll give you that, I guess. Kalen, two movies to recommend. Yeah, yeah that's right. Two also. Uh-huh. Um, so the sports that's movie. That's why we both have aprons that say, Kalen's do it twice. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, the sports movie I'll recommend is a while back. I watched a Netflix documentary called The Battered Bastards of Baseball, which is about – a minor league team. It's about alliteration. Yeah, no, nah, it's it's about a minor league baseball and how team. In the future, it's outlawed. <laughs> it's about a minor league baseball team called the Portland Mavericks that played in the 1970s. That was owned by Kurt Russell's dad, and right, uh, Kurt listening. Kurt Russell played for them for a few years, I think. And it also had a couple of like major league castoffs, like Jim Bouton was on the team. He's uh, oh, ball four. He wrote ball four, and he also invented big league chew. If that's the sort of thing you're into, mm. he was yep. yeah. shredded bubble gum. Uh-huh. And fucking super into it. Um, but does it simulate chewing tobacco? <laughs> yes, please. It's pretty. It's a pretty fun documentary because it's a bunch of it's crazy a way characters. These kids into tobacco use. <laughs> it's got a bunch of. Well, that's not why he invented it. But no, he invented it to make money. He invented it to make money and to give baseball players something to chew that wasn't tobacco. Mm-hmm. Anyway. It's a fun. I mean, there's no reason they couldn't just chew chewing gum. It's a fun documentary, but it also kind of shows how hypocritical Major League Baseball is to a certain degree. Uh, it's pretty good. Uh, that wasn't what I was going to recommend, but then everybody when I came here was like, "What sports movie do you have to recommend?" So that's that. Did so you say that? Yes. Dead on impression of us. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, oh, oh, what sports movie? Oh, the other, oh. the movie I was going to recommend is uh, it's me, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, hold on. <laughs> Is last week. Last week, I uh, I watched Beasts of No Nation, uh, which is not like fun to watch at all. It's really disturbing, so don't like watch it before you go to bed or something, or if you want to have a good time. But it's pretty good. <laughs> and hey, kid, you want to have some have a good time? <laughs> and is, get up first thing. Yeah, in the morning, first thing you should Beasts do. No watch watch this movie about child you soldiers in the Civil War. Time between finishing the movie yeah. and going to bed. Yeah, uh, but it makes some eggs. Yeah, <laughs> and you start your day. It's pretty good. Idris Elba's really great in it. Uh, you should watch it. It's on Netflix. Go do that. Prometheus's Ildris Elba? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what he's best known for. Rumored yeah. Roland Deschain from the Dark Tower series? Idris Elba? Mm-hmm. Wasn't he? Yeah, no, no that I, is indeed, a super Idris topical. Elba. I thought his I thought his biggest role was in uh Obsessed Idris Elba? <laughs> Heimdall from Thor? <laughs> No, what was that movie with the giant robots? The Pacific Rim. Yeah, that's his biggest. Uh, Packery. Yeah. Packery. <laughs> that's what all the kids call As it. As the fans call it. Yeah. The members of Pecfra, mm-hmm. the uh, playing association for mm-hmm. Pacific Rim. I'll recommend my movies. We're going long. Elliot's going to have to go super fast. I'm going to recommend two movies that are about white people going to countries where non-white people live and <laughs> doing stuff that's not so great to them. Uh, one's a new movie. One's an old movie. The new movie is... Man Who Would Be King? That is a great movie. But yeah, it's not I think I already recommended it. <laughs> yeah, the new movie is Sicario, which is uh, directed by that French director who did Prisoners, mm-hmm. uh, which mm-hmm. I didn't love but it looks great did you like uh, enemy i haven't seen it that's great uh but sicario is a, a in a one on, in one sense it's about the drug war that the u.s is waging mm-hmm. against mexican gangs but it is a very unrealistic movie that is <laughs> dosed with a thick layer of realism and so uh it actually is a, a really intense intense movie and there's some scenes in it that are just amazing for how intense and how uh hard they hit you but then when you're done watching it, you're like, wait a minute. I don't know if that's really how the drug war operates. Uh, and Benicio, Benicio Del Toro plays one of these uh, kind of silent, mysterious assassin types in it. And he's really good at it. Yeah, he's pretty great. Uh, it's a great looking movie. Even there's part there are, It's rare that I appreciate landscape shooting in a movie because <laughs> it's pretty easy to take a camera and point it at a beautiful landscape. But they've managed to take some of the most – kind of bleak landscapes on the North American continent and really make them look interesting and beautiful. So Sicario, if you want a grim and intense drug war thriller, if you're looking for something that's 
slightly lighter. There's I recently watched uh, Bo Jest, the 1939 version of that story, which is a William Wellman movie with Gary Cooper and Ray Land and Robert Preston. Uh, and it's the classic tale of three high society Englishmen just, who... Just checking my email. Because this is a movie from the 30s, they all have... I like that, that you that made a point to point out that it was the 1939 version. In yeah, case there's more than one version oh, okay. of the movie. Yeah. I'm not recommending those versions. I haven't seen them. <laughs> okay. No. I'm recommending the 1939 one, uh, where it's about three brothers. One of them has stolen a big gem, but uh, and they all leave to join the French. <laughs> they all leave to join the French Foreign Legion uh, as a way of keeping their honor, and they end up under the command of Brian Dunleavy as this very sadistic commander of this uh, Foreign Legion regiment, and he is amazingly horrifying and creepy in it. There's some great action scenes uh, with shootouts with the uh, Muslim nomadic tribes that are going through the area and fighting the French. And it's just a really good, like, old-fashioned adventure type movie, as long as you don't think about the fact that these guys are basically just volunteering to be part of a colonial force (laughs) that really doesn't have much reason to be there. But uh, Bo Jest, if you want more of an old-fashioned take on those things, Sicario, if we want a new-fashioned take on them. Okay. Oh, wow, Jackson. that was two, four, <laughs> five, six movies recommended. Yeah. yeah. Two of them coming from so each you, of the Kalen brothers. What yeah, a surprise. You, you got your homework for next yeah. week. Christmas. Chris, yeah. I don't fucking remember. When did we put this movie out? This podcast out? <laughs> 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 oh, we were supposed to be making a yeah. movie. Oh, no. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, this episode low, is low, the length yeah, of a film. Pretty low production costs. Do, every episode you guys have put out in the last, like, six months has been an hour and a half. You get all wrapped up. Talking about <laughs> stupid garbage yeah. and radio zorks and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Mm. Now that Elliot's not complaining about his day job all the time, we we, we, we got room to stretch. That's we true. Just stretch it out. Yeah. Stretch mm. it Instead out. Instead of having to rush home to go to sleep, he rushes home to sleep on a giant mountain of cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> you clearly know my brother really he's well. A crazy party animal he, now. He with is no a jobs. wild partier. He has always loved cocaine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, always. Your uh, your uh, your eyes don't match your belly. I just remember. In- <laughs> I don't know what that even means. <laughs> I like the idea that in your, your world eyes don't you're match swallowing it. all this cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> How are you supposed to eat it? I, but also, it's like it, that is like a scene from a, an '80s movie with like a Japanese character who keeps mistranslating American <laughs> phrases. So instead of saying "my eyes are bigger than my stomach," he goes, "Oh, my eyes don't match my belly." <laughs> I just like the idea. Yeah, that's right, it's, dude. It's raining squirrels and bears out there. <laughs> I just like the idea of Elliot as a huge coke fiend, <laughs> which is mm-hmm. amazing if you know, like, yeah, yes, like Elliot, why don't you come over? The pastry dissolves. <laughs> Elliot, why don't you watch this Buster Keaton movie with me? And he's like, no, 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 fuck that guy. I gotta do more cocaine. You know what? I can do okay. He's got the energy of a coke fiend. Also. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, on his ass. It's just like uh, I'm, I'm nervous that if Elliot started taking too many uh, too many uppers, he'd become the micro machine man, uh, pitchman. <laughs> 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 yeah, just talking about micro machines all the time. Yeah, you know Elliot's obsession with class cars, but small versions <laughs> only t- only when they're tiny. I don't want to drive them. I want to hold them in the palm. And he wears of my a hand. jumpsuit everywhere he goes <laughs> and a cap. Mm-hmm. Can't get this mustache to wear. Yeah. <laughs> well, you would have fit in in the movie though if you. Had had a goofy mustache. I Wait, there that. is a Micro Machines movie, and I'm just finding <laughs> no, out about no, it. no, no. <laughs> United Passions. Yeah, they, they, if he had the Micro Machine wizard, guy's mustache, a wizard steals the Micro Machines guy ability to fast talk. <laughs> that would have made that movie way quicker. So, no, but he steals it. He talks slow now. He uh, talks super slow. That's why the movie. But if someone in the movie seven hours long, <laughs> you know, because, because, with an intermission, of course, yeah. the overture is performed by dancing candy and stuff. I don't know. Uh, 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 Glenn dancing. <laughs> Ten minute overture that Glenn Danzig does. Okay, well this is just nonsense. Now we gotta. <laughs> okay, we so gotta time to wrap it up, it up uh, for the Flophouse podcast. Bond. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> I, you ran out of steam there. Yeah. Steve. Threw off the whole rhythm of the thing. I've been Dan McCoy. I've been Stuart Wellington. Uh, I've been uh, David. Last name withheld. And I'm Elliot Kalen, David's brother. Hooray for Aww. brothers! We did it. And Ooh. soccer. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you guys
guys can't keep making jokes while I have beer in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for calling those jokes. <laughs> <laughs> really, they were just sounds. <laughs> <laughs> Glass flophouse bit. Uh, Making mouse sounds. I would hang myself if I was here all the time. I think. Well, I mean, with the three of you, I mean. I thought you, you know, if you were Dan. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Dan seems perfectly nice. You let me have two beers for free. That's pretty good. I mean, some would say that's the least a host should provide. Uh, Ladies drink free. I mean, <laughs> others I mean, would say. I mean, I, I brought the beer, so if you don't. <laughs> Yeah, Dan, Dan doesn't deserve Dan anything. Dan, let me have some free beers from Stuart. I mean, I reminded you to bring beers. But <laughs> I guess, yeah, I guess you get, yeah, yeah, I guess you get half, half credit. Yeah, then you got the assist. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, the nice, term. nice sports terms. Thanks, <laughs> Mazel Tov. Maximumfun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. The three of you enter a cave of a big red dragon and is standing over a hoard of precious golden rubies. And he says, what do you do, adventures? I'm a dragon man. I cast fire on him. It's very good. I address the red dragon and say, us, we're the hosts of The Adventure Zone, a podcast about family playing Dungeons and Dragons. Very good synergy. Commit to the bit. I, I, <laughs> I roll to charm new listeners. It is very effective, <laughs> against all odds. Hey everybody, we're the Macroys. We host the Adventure Zones, a podcast where we play Dungeons & Dragons together. It's a comedy podcast. We don't take the rules too seriously because there's a lot of them and we did not take the time to learn them. Maybe listen to us. We come out every other Thursday on the Maximum Fun Network. You can find us on iTunes or on MaximumFun.org. I think this promo is a critical hit. 